Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about head injuries and intracranial hemorrhage. So today I'll discuss about head injuries and intracranial hemorrhage. I'll give emphasis on the epidural hemorrhage. Epidural hemorrhage. Subdural hemorrhage, subarachnoid hemorrhage, okay, then intracerebral hemorrhage, intra. Cerebral hemorrhage. I'll also emphasize on the head injury, head injury due to due to fracture of the base of the skull. Fracture of, you can say, very easy way. So, fracture of the base of the skull. Okay, and we find out some some of the signs and symptoms signs and symptoms so this will be our discussion today let's start one by one number one is epidural hemorrhage so epidural hemorrhage is a hemorrhage between the dura mater and the scalpel okay this is a hemorrhage between the dura mater dura mater and the skull bone We got the epidural hemorrhage, hemorrhage between the dura mater and the skull bone. Commonly at anterior, common side, commonly at terion. So, what is terion? What is terion? You must know that word. What is terion? Terion. Terion is a part of the skull where four bones unite and the skull is comparatively thinner at that place. So if you look at the skull, so this is the terion. We have four bones come close together. This is the parietal bone, this is the frontal bone, this is the temporal bone, this is the sphenoid bone. Okay, so we got four bone. We have the frontal bone, we have the parietal bone, we have the temporal bone, we have the sphenoid bone. Okay, so four bones come close together at the terion. So, terion is the site of union of the, we have the frontal bone, frontal bone, 
then we have the parietal bone. Temporal bone, and the spinoid bone. Okay, this is the common site of fracture or damage or trauma in case of epidural or extradural hemorrhage. Epidural or extradural hemorrhage, it is outside the dura mater but inside the bone of the skull okay so this four bone come in close together here at terion so what structures are related to terion so structures related to the terion what are those structures? We have the middle meningeal artery. You can say the middle meningeal artery, middle meningeal artery, and the anterior division of the middle meningeal artery is most commonly damaged in case of epidural hemorrhage. It is the anterior division of the middle meningeal artery. We have the middle meningeal vein, meningeal vein. It is also related to that of the perion and it may be damaged in some situation. Also in the same place we have the, the stem of the lateral sulcus of the brain okay the lateral sulcus of the brain okay so so these structures are related to the terion so in epidural hemorrhage we have learned what are the structures related to that okay so these are the anterior division of the middle meningeal artery, middle meningeal, middle meningeal vein and the stem of the lateral sulcus of the brain. Okay. So, we got the terion, we got the structures related to the terion and we found that the epidural hemorrhage is the hemorrhage between the dura mater and the skull bone. And we know that Dura mater has two layer. One is the periosteal layer. The other one is the meningeal layer. Okay. So periosteal layer we can call it endosteal layer, and the meningeal layer. So this is the bone here, the skull bone, and this is the fracture of the skull bone. And our dura mater is here. This is dura mater. Dura. This is the dura mater. Dura mater. This is the skull bone and the dura mater. And the art artery which is broken, this is the middle meningeal artery. That is the middle meningeal artery. It is most commonly broken due to fracture or any severe blow to the terion area. You may get the, the epidural hemorrhage. So, what is the classic presentation? The classic presentation is brief concussion followed by lucid interval, then profound unconsciousness and coma. So, we will have brief concussion loss of consciousness so classic presentation we are now going through epidural hemorrhage or epidural hematoma hemorrhage okay we have classic presentation 
what is the classic presentation we have the loss of consciousness brief concussion brief concussion there's, there is loss of loss of consciousness okay then we get lucid interval interval patient got a blow or get the heat of a ball it may be a cricket ball it may be a baseball bat on the terion area okay he lost consciousness he is on the ground he or she okay then he will, he will gain the consciousness and we call it lucid interval it may be variable for half an hour to one hour maybe even more or less okay then after lucid interval he may go to his hotel or may go to his car again this person will go through the the unconsciousness and coma profound unconsciousness profound unconsciousness and coma and it may lead to death of that person person may die due to epidural hemorrhage what happened due to hemorrhage there will be collection of blood there will be increased intracranial pressure intracranial pressure will push the fox cerebri this is the fox cerebri okay fox cerebri okay bring to the other side even due to edema here there may be herniation of the brain underneath one one hemisphere may go underneath the fox cerebri to the other side to pushing it on the other side we call it sub felsine herniation we call it sub felsine herniation sub felsine herniation okay this is due to increase in the kernel pressure due to edema collection of fluid here that will give this this condition even there may be transtentorial herniation we may have the brain push down through the foramen magna brain stem will go down and the part of the temporal lobe may be lacerated on the tentorial the of the of the of the tentorium cerebelli on the tentorial notch area sharp notch area so we may have trans trans tentorial herniation trans tentorial tentorial herniation okay so this is the problem with the epidural hemorrhage again most common artery is the anterior division of the middle meningeal artery but it may be the middle meningeal vein common site is the terion maybe other part of the skull may have the epidural hemorrhage okay and the classic or textbook presentation is brief concussion followed by lucid interval followed by profound unconsciousness and coma leading to death but that may not be always true this is this classic presentation is only true in one third cases okay so may not be always all the patient will show this okay we got that so what is the management of this patient before going to the management this should be handled by a neurosurgeon okay if the ct scan if we do the ct scan okay then we'll see biconvex appearance by convex appearance of the collection of blood okay okay we got that and it should be handled by a neurosurgeon in emergency okay so surgeon will do the it will surgeon will do either bar hole or craniotomy craniotomy 
and they will remove the, the surgeon will remove the blood clot and repair the bleeding vessel. Okay, that's all about the epidural hemorrhage. Now we'll go to the subdural hemorrhage. Subdural hemorrhage. Subdural hemorrhage. This hemorrhage is at the junction between the dura mater and the arachnoid point mater. Okay, this is the hemorrhage near the junction of the junction of the dura mater, the meningeal layer of dura mater, dura mater. Dura mater and the arachnoid mater. You can know that there is no specific space like subdural space, there is a potential space. What happened due to collection of blood, some of the dural border cell layer will separate out from the from the dural cell other sense of the dura matter okay and there will be collection of blood okay. so this is the collection of blood here okay and this is due to the due to the dural dural cell inner dural cell separation and some of the bridging blood vessels these are the bridging vessels, bridging veins, bridging, bridging veins are the veins, these are the superior cerebral vein which are opening to the superior sagittal sinus, they are called the bridging veins that, that may, be, may be damaged usually due to trauma okay, or fall anyway or maybe some type of uh, type of abuse that may cause subdural hematoma, dural border, border cell layer, rupture uh, layer forms the, forms the subdural hematoma, the only rupture of the, of the breeze veins, these are the superior cerebral vein which are opening into the superior sagittal sinus, okay, so that is the subdural hemorrhage or hematoma and usually the patient may have lost consciousness okay so we may get some type of symptoms impaired consciousness or there may be some neurological deficit or it may be asymptomatic even sometimes depending on the extent of trauma okay there is a subdural hematoma or hemorrhage hematoma means collection of blood little bit clotted this is hemorrhage fresh blood here okay both are same this will be to the it will, be, it will be converted into hematoma eventually okay so there is the subdural hematoma so in our ct scan what we'll get in ct scan we'll get crescent shaped feature okay subdural subdural hematoma or hemorrhage hematoma we'll get crescent shape crescent shape lesion in the CT scan, computerized axial tomography scan, okay, that is here. So we got epidural hemorrhage, it is lens type, lesion in CT scan, it is lens type, like a biconvex convex lens. And this is subdural hematoma. It looks like a crescent shape appearance. It is at the junction between the dura mater and the arachnoid mater, but in fact, it is formed by the inner, inner dural border cell. They split it due to the damage to the breathing veins. This is another breathing vein, breathe vein, breathing vein. Okay. And this is our superior sagittal sinus. 
superior sagittal sinus okay we got that and this is the the fox city tree here we got that the subdural hematoma again this should be managed by the neurosurgeon and surgeon will repair that condition the the problem and remove the blood clot okay we got the subdural hematoma now we go to the subarachnoid hemorrhage subarachnoid hemorrhage subarachnoid hemorrhage okay subarachnoid hemorrhage may be traumatic may be a traumatic okay it may be traumatic or it may be a traumatic a traumatic okay both are possible so a traumatic or traumatic so if in case of or a traumatic most common cause is rupture or rupture of secular aneurysm secular or berry aneurysm berry aneurysm 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 is the abnormal dilatation of the blood vessel especially the circle of willis you know that circle of willis formed by the vertebral artery then the basilar artery posterior cerebral artery okay internal carotid artery okay then we have the middle cerebral artery anterior cerebral artery okay and we have posterior communicating artery here and we have the anterior communicating artery okay so we got the circle of willis this is the basilar artery okay this is the vertebral artery okay this is the anterior cerebral artery cerebral artery okay and this is the middle cerebral artery middle cerebral artery okay so we got that so usually there may be a aneurysm just like a berry here maybe here maybe multiple maybe one more here but usually on the anterior aspect more chance to get berry aneurysm due to berry aneurysm there will be a traumatic due to hypertension or sudden increase in intracranial pressure due to cough or constipation that may rupture this berry aneurysm that will lead to a traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage so it may be enhanced by hypertension it may be associated with polycystic kidney disease or fibromuscular dysplasia or congenital vascular abnormality okay or it may be associated with some type of blood dyscrasia or some type of some type of blood diseases so that may be ruptured and we'll get the subarachnoid hemorrhage okay so we got that the traumatic and atraumatic type of subarachnoid hemorrhage subarachnoid hemorrhage is present in the subarachnoid space subarachnoid space is the dura mater this is the arachnoid mater this is the pia mater okay that goes to the brain pia mater okay so pia mater we have the arachnoid villi here arachnoid trabeculae of the arachnoid okay so we got the trabeculae of the arachnoid and this is a real space and there will be blood here there will be blood here blood will be in the subarachnoid space and subarachnoid space what is the presentation a classic presentation is severe headache okay due to meningeal irritation so we get also neck rigidity neck rigidity we may have other signs of meningeal irritation like brudzinski sign karnik sign positive okay and most common is the severe headache what type of headache this is the worst headache in one's lifetime this is the worst headache headache in one's lifetime we call it thunder clap headache thunder thunder clap headache okay so this is usually a patient around is 35 or 40 
he might have aneurysm, congenital aneurysm, maybe a part of a, a genetic disorder, it may be a part of the other type of uh, polycystic problem like polycystic kidney disease may be associated with very aneurysm. Okay, there will be headache, stiff neck, stiff stiffness of the neck region and there will be loss of consciousness and if it is not managed then and even management is not very good a lot of people die before reaching the hospital and outcome may be very bad in most cases okay we call the subarachnoid hemorrhage now we go to the intracerebral hemorrhage it may be intracerebellar hemorrhage it may be we can call it intraparenchymal hemorrhage intracerebral or better to say intraparenchymal hemorrhage okay that will include not only cerebrum cerebellum brain stem okay intraparenchymal hemorrhage okay. Okay. again it may be due to due to trauma okay maybe a part of hypertension before going there we have to know the the again we we'll go to the subarachnoid hemorrhage we must not miss that point subarachnoid hemorrhage hemorrhage in subarachnoid hemorrhage if we do a lumbar puncture we will get rbc okay so red blood cell is found in the in the lumbar in the csf 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 in lumbar puncture okay we have to know that part so let's go to the intraparenchymal or intracerebral hemorrhage intracerebral hemorrhage okay intracerebral hemorrhage may be due to traumatic condition any head injury trauma any type of trauma maybe due to due to rupture of rupture of of defective blood vessel defective blood vessel okay so that may be a blood vessel maybe maybe an aneurysm okay maybe rupture of aneurysm there rupture of Aneurysm. Aneurysm. Aneurysm means abnormal dilatation of the blood vessel like that. Okay. Or like that. Abnormal dilatation of the blood vessel. That is the aneurysm. It may be congenital. It may be gradually developed due to complication of hypertension. Okay. Intercerebral hemorrhage. It may be a part of blood disgrace here. What will happen? It depends on where is the site of lesion okay one of the common site of intercerebral hemorrhage is the lenticular striate branches lenticular striate branches branches of the middle cerebral artery from the first part of the middle cerebral artery middle cerebral artery okay so they that will supply the basal ganglia the lentiform nucleus and corpus striata so its name is lenticular striate branch of the middle cerebral artery it also supplies the internal capsule okay the descending fibers and ascending fiber so depending on the on the on the site of lesion and amount of lesion person may develop paralysis okay and may lead to death okay Intercerebral hemorrhage may be due to that problem or also intercerebral hemorrhage may happen due to bleeding inside the brain tumor, bleeding inside the brain tumor, brain tumor or maybe bleeding inside and in an, in an infract, okay, bleeding inside and infract okay. so it should be managed by the neurosurgeon or on the neurology department 
So intracerebral hemolysis, we got that. It may be traumatic, may be atraumatic due to congenital defect in the blood vessel, may be aneurysm as a part of the late stage of hypertension. Okay, it is one of the leading cause of death. It, is, it causes stroke okay, or cerebrovascular accident. Okay. We got that. We got the intercerebral hemorrhage. Then we go to the fracture at the base of the skull. Okay. Fracture. Or we can write this fracture at the base of the skull. Okay. Base of the skull. How can we say a person has fracture base of the skull? We have many clues for that. Number one, we may have uh, our patient may have raccoon eyes. Okay, raccoon eyes is same as black eye. Okay, even you can call it is the panda eye, like the panda of China. Okay, or raccoon of the United States. Okay, black eye. Recognize that may be due to fracture of the base of the skull on the anterior cranial fossa region. Okay, we may have also there will be okay, epistaxis, epistaxis. Okay, we can call it rhinorrhea, rhinorrhea, rhinorrhea. That is, see, cerebrospinal fluid leaking out of the nose along with the blood okay so csf coming out of the coming out of the of the nose it is another reason to believe that person has anterior cranial fossa fracture base of the anterior cranial fossa fracture raccoon eye and we have epistaxis okay in case of middle cranial fossa we have also autoria, 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 that means blood or the cerebrospinal fluid may come out through the ear, okay, blood and CSF coming out of the, coming out of the the auricle okay in that autoria you may have hemotympanum there will be collection of blood in the ear internal ear and also the middle ear okay so we got autoria then we may have another sign that is called battle sign battle sign is the battle sign is the post auricular achymosis okay that is post auricular post auricular auricular achymosis achymosis so these are the things that usually the battle sign or autoria are associated with the fracture of the either middle cranial fossa or posterior cranial fossa epistaxis or rhinorrhea is a, a manifestation also raccoon eye is a manifestation of anterior cranial fossa but little bit overlapping is always possible so that's all about the intracranial hemorrhage so if you like my video please support my channel please subscribe me and share the information with your friends have a nice day bye now